This is Melvin. See Melvin learn how to set up a studio in his home. See Melvin learn how to light. See Melvin learn how to make money in photography. Next on the Sun Lens. Hi, so Melvin, this is the room. Yes, it is. So tell me what your vision is. What do you want to do? You have some thoughts? This is a, my media room in my home, and I want to create a studio um, where I can do my pictures, where I don't have to go out and rent a studio, basically. Perfect. OK. Well, let me tell you my first kind of initial thoughts looking at it here. The bevels in the ceiling are going to cause a little bit of a problem for us, but I don't think a huge one. The fact that they're beveled won't bother you as far as putting up your soft boxes and things, because mm -hmm. if you push a stand across against the wall, it's not going to bump into that bevel. It's those boxes are going to stick out in front of it just enough, I think. Okay. It might be a little bit of a problem. You may want to favor this side as far as lighting, but you don't want to okay. be tied into always having to put your soft box on the same side. Okay. I think you can do both sides. First thing I would do here is I would paint the two side walls white. Okay. Reason being is that now those become, you got a little bit of a color here, it's got a warmish tone, which mm -hmm. is the light bouncing on that warmish tone is going to give a little bit of warmth mm -hmm. in that uh, reflection. Okay. So let's just get rid of that by painting these white. Should I paint it a glossy or a flat? Or Definitely a flat. One flat. flat white. Okay. Okay. Now that will become a nice kind of flat reflector. So if I set a box up on the side, we're lighting a figure here. The light's going to bounce off of the white and bounce in back to the person. Okay. Now that can be good or bad because sometimes it's just too much bounce, you know, okay. and the uh, ratios are just too, it's like one to one, it's like just overlit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put a white, a black curtain up on each wall. Okay. So that now gives you the option, if you put your light up here, you can now draw those curtains back and get a little bit of bounce off that white. Okay. What's nice about that in a smaller room like this is you don't have to set up a reflector always on this side. You can use the wall as that reflector. Or you can do that on either side too. Yeah, either side. Okay. You can switch it to either side you want to. Okay. I wouldn't paint the back wall. Leave it that warm tone. You're going to be putting seamlesses in front of it anyway. You might want to roll the seamless up, but just shoot against, you know, who knows. The last thing we want to talk about is the floor. Okay. It's hard if you're going to do a full, uh, full body shot to have carpet. Because when you walk right. on the seamless, it just it crunches the seamless. It just doesn't really work. Right. Uh, I think the best thing what I would do is I would just lay three sheets of plywood down on the car. Four by eight plywood because this this room is thirteen by eleven. Perfect. Width wise, so, so you got twelve foot. Twelve foot, eight foot back, which is perfect to be able to roll your seamless out on it. Okay. And now you can you put your uh, just lay them down, tape them. You can roll your seamless out and it's perfect. Okay. And if you seamless, you start feeling like, oh, I need my seamless to come out further, then just pull them forward a little bit. Oh, okay. So now you've got a nice base for your floor. Uh, and remember, on when you shoot something like this, this is something really important to know is you have your, your angle of view, your, your photography, your, your camera's angle of view, mm -hmm. and that's really controlled by the background. Okay. So that angle of view goes out, goes in this like a funnel back to the camera. Okay. So you're going to see the entire background, but now you don't see anything in these triangular corners right and left. That's where your lights go. The curtains. Curtains, everything like that. So you really, from the camera's point of view, if our camera we're using right here is our camera, it sees out like this, we see our background. So all these areas on the side. So you're not gonna use that much of this plywood up front. It's mostly gonna just mm, be, okay. but you can put your stands on it and it'll work out nice. You can roll your seamless out on it. Okay. The room is a little shallow for a, a full body without having to be on a pretty wide lens. Okay. But the one thing that we do have is a door here. And with that door, we could do this. I could set, if you stand there, mm -hmm. I can move myself. So if I'm trying to get a full body on you, I'm not gonna get it here. I'm gonna have to step out this door, about five or six feet out this door. And then at that point, I can get the full body. Yep. So okay. you can add another 10 feet Okay. Easily add another 10 feet. I just stepped out the door to the, to the camera right side here. I think you can easily add another 10 feet in that view okay. and have your model just work off to this side, light from that side into your white or black here and you can start using that run there. So okay. Maybe your wife wouldn't mind if you just knocked that door out and moved <laughs> over about a couple of feet. <laughs> you just made a little adjustment there. <laughs> So I've been in Houston for a few days now, and uh, where I'm not going to say exactly where we're at, but uh, I've got a little sticker to put on my case, and I'm going to roll this case down the staircase here. We're going to launch it into space, for say. I'm not really saying where we're at, but we're going to put it on our case right here. Little SKB case, little sticker. 
action there. Yeah, like that baby. Now, let's throw this inside and I'm gonna keep it rolling and I'm gonna roll this down the stairs. Uh, still rolling without any problem there. If I get myself focused here, we'll be in good shape. And then, there we go. Still working, still working absolutely fine and looking good. SKB case, ready to rock and roll. Now, I'm not saying where we were today, but uh, that's maybe where we were. Okay, so we just got back here this morning, and uh, you've been busy. Yeah, I just kind of tidied up things. I uh, put the curtains up, uh, put the clamps on to make sure we got the elbows uh, for the Yep, so now seamless. we have uh, the one thing we talked about er, this morning <coughs> was mm -hmm. because of this, uh, the space and the, the tightness of the space here, I would put a plate up there uh, in this corner, and I would put a 3 8 inch um, on it, a, uh, a 3 8 inch plate. You can buy them on uh, Amazon, you know, B&H, mm -hmm. you know, and j it'll just shoot in the wall and that's just a place you can put a light in each one of the corners. So you can put your rim light from behind and you can hang it up in the in the uh, ceiling. The upside of that is it saves you space. Right. The downside of that is it's always in the same place. Okay. And that, that limits what you're doing a lot. Okay. So using a stand in that corner just gives you the ability to move it and to adjust it and do different things with it. Well, the nice thing, the next step for you mm -hmm. is if you start to use continuous lighting, LEDs or something like that, yes. then you, get, you see exactly what it's going to do. Okay. And it makes it a lot easier to understand where lights go. Okay. Uh, whereas when you start using flashes... Flashes, you don't see it unless you take a picture. You see it in the camera. Correct. Okay. Well, we can start with, we can use my LED. I've got an incredible LED here. Okay. Maybe Dallin can get a shot of it. But it's the uh, Intellitech, and it's called their light cloth. But that's an expensive light for you, for what you're starting out with. Okay. You'd be better off to, uh, just for the very first thing you're going to get, uh, the lights that we talked about in the lesson I did on setting up a home studio that we got from Lowe's. Okay. And check out all those lights. They're just a, a easy. There's a one there. It's kind of a round bowl, and it's just a soft box, basically. It's really easy okay. to light. But check that lesson out. That'll give you some th uh, pointers on that. But, okay. But for today, let's set it up with your strobe. Let's, <laughs> let's make your strobe work. All, all right. right. And then as soon as we get a quick shot here, we're going to do a quick shot, something very moody. Then, as soon as we get that shot, then we're going to just sit for two seconds and I'm going to tell him what I think he needs to do to start his photo business. Because there's a couple of steps he needs to do next to start to make this a commercial venture for him. We'll talk about that real quick. We'll get a couple of stools and just wrap it up on that. So, okay. Alright, let's, let's get a shot. So let's get a stool here and let's get your light in here and let's go to town. Okay. So there we have it. We've set Melvin's studio up for him. We've got curtains on the side. We've yeah. got a place to put seamlesses in the back. He's yeah. bringing flooring in. Going to do some painting. You're going to do some video for us, right? As soon as this is all done. Yes. Just some panning videos and just show us what's done here. And then I want you to do a shoot in here. Uh, take okay. a picture of your wife or something. Just do a shoot after okay. we're gone and send us some of those pictures. Right, we definitely. want the pictures I did of me as well. We're going to show that okay. part of, as part of the lesson. All right. So we went through how to set up the studio. We've gone through just some simple lighting techniques using a very small, uh, inexpensive uh, speed light, a single light with a reflector. Uh, so you can really work in this space and do a lot of interesting things in this space. Okay. Just that that one light uh, should be a lot of fun. But now I'm going to give you a little bit of advice All right. about, you said it would be great if you could make this in to a living mm -hmm. and make money at it. Yeah. There's one simple thing you have to do. Actually, I'm going to say two, but we'll start off with Number one is I want you to think about what is it out there in the world that people do that is interesting to you. 
So find something that you are interested in photographing that people are going to pay for. That's headshots, senior portraits, uh, portraits of babies, portraits of animals, animals, exactly. kid, animals is a great one. I mean, find something like that you really like, okay, and start focusing on that, and make that your Instagram feed, and shoot a hundred of them. I, I want you right now in this space. You should shoot a, a person a day at least. Okay. I mean, you have the space, you've got the equipment, and you'll just keep learning. Just do one a day, one a day, and try to make them look really interesting and fun and, and just really nice images. They're just these little niche markets that give you a reason to exist and start Instagramming those. Get them up. Shoot one a day and put one up on Instagram a day becomes your beginning point and your, your kind of your launch. Okay. People look at that and they'll either go, man, he doesn't know that much. Or they'll go, you know what? I love what this guy's doing. Okay. That person's gonna, gonna reach contact. out to you and go, hey, I love what you're doing. Will you take a picture of me? Okay. So your next phase is you start taking pictures of people who are reaching out to you. Then, the, So the first phase is you reach out to people, try to get people. Then you try to find people, people that are following your Instagram, reach out to them. When you see people that look really interesting to photograph, reach out to them and say, hey, I'd love to do a shoot with you. Okay. I'm here in Cyprus outside of Houston. Love to have you come and do a shoot with you. Okay. You know, and so you start shooting with them. And then the last stage is you start charging people. Maybe it's uh, $75. For a set of images maybe it's you know you get that up to 150 you know 250 for a setting then you you know headshot people should be charging twelve hundred dollars for a setting okay. you know, when you really get to where you're supposed to be okay so anyway i hope you learned some things today about how to set up your studio how to do some simple one kind of light setups to start shooting and then just some tips on getting out there and starting to create your own brand and to get people to follow you to be able to create your own world doing photography. This can be a part-time thing you do. Uh, it can be a full, work into a full-time thing. It can just be a hobby thing. It, just, it really depends on what you want to do with it. But remember that principle, find somebody who's gonna pay you to shoot what you are shooting. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Here at the Stunning Lens, we're really big on business, so get over to thestunninglens.com and buy our business downloads. It's 16 segments that so will help you shape your business, plus it comes with a group call-in once a month with me where you can ask all your questions. So get over to thestunninglens.com today. The studio's all complete and all systems are go. But first, I'd like to say a very special thank you to J.P. Morgan from the Slanted Lens for helping me put this studio together. Thank you, J.P. Thank you.